Welcome to Mission Del Sol. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship today. If you're worshiping with us online, I encourage you to let us know that you're here by signing in on Facebook or on a virtual friendship pad so that we might all worship together uh, following the service and greet each other following the service. During our worship service, our, well, today is a special day because our kids are helping lead worship today, so I hope you enjoy their additions to worship. Um, we also will have a time for our young and young at heart to come sit on the front steps for our children's message. Afterwards, they will be excused to Sunday school with Miss Jane, um, and parents can pick them up in room 108 after worship is over. During, uh, if you are a first time visitor, we encourage you to make your way to the welcome table and pick up a candle made by the members of the church. Also, kids can pick up their prizes uh, there following worship uh, for doing their worship uh, bulletin outlines. I think that's all we need, so I'd like to invite Liam to come forward for a call to worship. Please rise in heart and mind and join me in our responsive call to worship based on Psalm 100. We applaud God. We shall praise. The gift of laughter and hugs. Singing ourselves into God's presence. Because God is God. She us. We are his people. Thank God. Let us worship God together.
Amen. Jesus said, I came, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world here. The good news, Jesus came to save you in uh, Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us rise to sing our praise. Let us share that peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Grace and peace be with all of you today. I'd like to invite Susan forward for our first announcement. But while she's coming up, I'll remind you that we have sandwiches after church today. We're working on our sandwiches to for the each of the Good morning, Mission Del Sol. Um, as many of you are aware, it's Pastor Appreciation Month, and I want to thank people who are reminders and volunteers who helped me put together a video for Pastor Kelsey, and it doesn't end today, so if you would like to send her cards throughout the month, she may not read them this week because she'll be hiking Havasu Pike Falls, but when she gets back, it would be a nice present. Feels like
creator. Caring. Precious. Multi-generation. Preaches from the heart. Appropriate. Uh, Pastor Kelsey is full of energy and she has great ideas. October 21st, we are having our first work day of the year. We're going to be painting, we're going to be cleaning, we're going to be spiffing up the whole search, the whole campus. So if you'd like to participate, there will be a job for everyone at every age and stage. So um, please talk to Larry or Clyde, because Larry's not here today, um, or myself, and we'd be happy to get you all the details. It'll be fun. Now I'd like to invite our kids to come forward for their special anthem they're singing for us. Because 
you know, today we've already sung about it, we've talked about it, but we have been uh, talking all about this, this wall, this the whole city that's going to fall down, right? Well, I thought you guys could help me build some towers today, so I need like a group, a couple of different groups of people to build some different kinds of towers. Okay, so I have a couple different kinds of towers we're going to build. So, Lucille, can you and your two cousins build us a tower with Jenga blocks? Just a... Oh, Travin and uh, Margaret, can you build us a tower with, um, with those Legos? And uh, you guys get to build a tower with Play-Doh. Yep, dump them all out. Let's see how that goes. Can you build us a tower? You can stand up. Hurry, hurry. Let's do it fast. Get those Legos going. You guys are building a row. We gotta have a tower taller. How do we build a tower tall? Yeah, there we go. Okay. You have 30 seconds. Let's see how fast you can build that tower.
what I think is really important for us to remember about our text today is, can you guys all help me collect all the Legos and put them back in their container? And put the Play-Doh in their container? I know. But you know what, I can send them with Miss Jane and she could make something in Sunday school. Because what is important about our text is that God tells us that when we're kind and we're loving, all the walls fall down. Can we pray together? Yeah. Dear God, help us to be kind and loving so that all the hard walls fall down. Amen. You guys did an awesome job. Way to go. today is done with a little help from the kids. You guys all ready? You're going to need to stand up. Stand up. Do you remember our words? Okay, so I invite you to give us all patience here. As we uh, practice and listen to what happens to these walls that come down. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out or came in. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its kings and its fighting men. March. Around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets. <laughs> of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march. Around the city seven times with all the priests blowing the trumpets. <laughs> and when you hear the sound of a long blast on the trumpets, Then the walls of the city will collapse and the whole army will give it up. Everyone will be straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and asked them, take up the Ark of the Covenant. Hey, it's not time to blow the trumpets. Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and the Lord have seven priests carry their trumpets. And he ordered the army to advance, march around the city with the armed guard ahead of the Ark of the Lord. Then Joshua spoke to the people, and the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets. And they blew their trumpets. the Lord's covenant followed them. The armed guards marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets. And the rear guard followed the ark. All the time the trumpets were sounding. But Joshua had commanded the army, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. And then you are to shout. 
So the ark of the Lord carried the, around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning. The priests took up the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests carried the seven trumpets and went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing their trumpets. went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord with the trumpets. They kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to camp, and they did this for six days. And then on the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on the that day, they circled the city seven times. And on the seventh time around, the priest shouted the trumpet blast. And Joshua commanded the army to shout. For the Lord has given you the city, and the city and all that was in it are here to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab and the prophet. The prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared, because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from all the devoted things, so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any one of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of the Israelites liable for destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and gold and all the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. So when the trumpet... And the army shouted, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And when the men gave that loud shout, the walls collapsed. And everyone charged straight in and they took the city. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, you guys can go to Sunday school. truth. Thank you for children. Thank you for laughter. Thank you for the ways that you make things happen when they are totally unexpected and out of the norm. Use the simple words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts so that we might hear your word for us today. Amen. Well, it has been quite a journey to finally get here to Jericho. On the way, we remember the words from God to Jericho and to the community that they are supposed to be strong and courageous, that God will be with them through all of it. Remember, God got them across the raging Jordan River. God sent them the commander of the army to guide them. God told them exactly what they were going to need to do to win this battle. But still, every time we have to face a fortress, we face it with trepidation and fear and maybe a little bit of worry. See, Jericho was a medium-sized wall city. It wasn't huge, but it wasn't small either. It was just west of the Jordan River, and archaeologists say that it was about eight and a half acres in size. It had this spring-fed water source, so everyone always stopped in Jericho on their way to get a drink and, and um, have a little rest. It was an old city. At this point, it had already been rebuilt several times. None of that made it any easier for this ragtag group of Israelites to face a well-established city. It's at the same time that we also know what it feels like to face that overwhelming, just a little scary, 
unsure of ourselves and our skills when we face our own fortress. Maybe for you it's a new job or a change you're trying to make in your life, a test at school, a hard conversation you have to have, grief over the person you love that you've lost, house projects, retirement, big changes, your kids, or something totally other. Something that just hits you in a way that you never thought could happen. And we stand before whatever that Jericho-like fortress is. And we're always a little, or maybe a lot, afraid. Worried about what might happen and wondering if what God said is really true. Because before the Israelites ever started into Jericho, before the battle cries, before the marching, before I let the kids use trumpets in church, God told them that they had already won. The ultimate, knowing the future seven days before it was ever going to happen, happens right here in this text. But what's interesting about what Jesus, what God says, is that it isn't because of their strength or their courage or their wisdom. It isn't because they so expertly blew their horns or how covertly they snuck into Jericho or because they can just problem solve. It's because, like us, we too are on God's side. Now, that doesn't mean that every time you go in to conquer a big struggle, we get exactly what we want. We all have situations where things don't go like we planned. But that doesn't mean that God wasn't there from the very beginning, all the way through the middle, and at the very end. And in the end, God's plan always comes into fruition, no matter what happens or how it goes. It all depends upon all the different pieces that have their play, and how well we listen to what God asks us to do. In this case, the Israelites were doing, supposed to do something that seemed a little crazy, or at least to me. They were supposed to march around Jericho one time each day for six days, following the Ark of the Covenant. And the hardest part was that they were supposed to be totally silent while they did it. There was no weird horns they were blowing like the kids practiced. Total silence, one time around the outside of the city. And then, and what this must have looked like for the folks in Jericho. I mean, did they think that these were weird tourists that had lost their tour bus trying to find the outside and they didn't know how to get back into the city? Was it the sound of the trumpets that marked the hour like time of a bell? Were they mesmerized by the formational marching and they just had to keep watching? Did they doubt that their fears were not really worthy that this group could actually win a battle against them? And then, on the seventh day, they were to march seven times around Jericho. And at this point, if I were the people of Jericho, I would think, what is going on with those people out there? I might even laugh at them. I mean, marching around the outside of a building is going to do nothing for anyone. They had built this group up as someone to be feared, but all they did was march around the outside of the city in silence. There's no talking, there's no jokes, there's no marching songs to pass the time. That is until Joshua said they were to make one shout. Their only weapons were their voices. And they were not shouts of attack, but a shout of praise. Sometimes voices can be our strongest and most forgotten weapons. I think about the words of Abraham Lincoln after losing the Battle of Gettysburg and his speech, or Martin Luther, whose words were nailed to a church building and started a reformation, or Martin Luther King Jr., whose words about a dream still echo every time we hear about injustice, or Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who fought her whole life for equality for all people. And then, of course, there's Rahab in our text, who saved herself and her family by using her words. And she, they were the only ones saved when the city was finally destroyed. Words have the power to cut like a knife, or comfort like a blanket, or guide like a map. They teach us how to get forward. They teach us and guide us everywhere we go. Words matter. And so does silence. Remember that when you are about to conquer whatever is before you. 
So the Israelites did exactly as God said. For six days they marched in silence, and on the seventh day they ended with shouts of praise. And just like the song that the kids sang this morning goes, the walls came tumbling down. Some say that it was some sort of unexplainable miracle. Others say that the engineers probably say that it was a structural problem, and the loose <laughs> bricks just made it come tumbling down. But it doesn't really matter how it happened. What matters is that God said that it would, and that it did. And several run in and rescue Rahab and her family, just like they promised, and the rest begin to take those spoils that are going to help them along the rest of their journey. And then they do what never, everyone does not want to talk about. It's why so many times we just focus on the New Testament instead of the Old Testament. Because our 21st century minds just can't get our minds wrapped around the fact that God tells them to kill everyone left in Jericho and burn everything else to the ground. It just doesn't seem like that welcoming, loving, grace-filled God who would actually send Jesus to be born in a manger and to live among us would actually say all these other things too. We could try and explain it away and say that the folks in Jericho were hostile and they were mean to those Israelite spies, and so because they were not welcoming to their new neighbors, they chose to run them out of town, and only Rahab, who was kind and welcoming, had her life spared. Or we could tell ourselves that this is just what they did at that time, which is true. The practice was to kill everything or kill everyone and take, or take them as slaves and burn the city to the ground. That was a cultural practice. But the Israelites didn't do it every time. They only did it when God said so. Some of the cities that they're about to conquer in chapters ahead are left just as they are. But truthfully, none of it makes us feel any better that the God of love and grace and truth would demand death of another human person. And I wish that as I stand up here I had a great explanation. But I really don't. Except to say that God always wants to make sure that we stay focused on God. And sometimes it is too easy to get wrapped up in what others are thinking or doing or what the culture says we should, should or should not be doing. Sometimes we even get wrapped up in our own heads. And when those things happen, it pulls us away from understanding what God has called us to do. We start to think we can do it all on our own. We let our fears get the better of us. Our doubts and our worries start to have control, and that's when things start to fall apart. And truthfully, that's what happens to the Israelites. Things start to fall apart every time they forget about God. Today, we don't have to worry about storming walls in neighboring cities, states, or countries. But there are walls in our lives that have to come down. Walls around our hearts, that keep us from being the person in the community that God wants us to be. Walls that are built up from doubts and addictions and judgments, pride and stubbornness and fear. And it's scary sometimes to stand in front of those walls and ask God's help to tear them down. Too often they become our own safeguards from getting hurt or lost or worse, but they keep us from having to be vulnerable in front of others. It would be easier to leave the walls there as protection from all the hard stuff that comes at us every single day. But leaving the walls there or trying to take the walls out on our own never works. Instead, it just keeps us from the love and belonging that we all yearn for. It's why we have to tear them down, and it's why we need them never to come back. We need the walls around our hearts to come down so we can live with the freedom that only comes when we finally enter that promised land, when we can finally live as God calls us to live. The Israelites and Rahab, along with her, their, her family, leave Jericho with the smolders behind them. They leave the hard stuff behind in the rubble, and they focus on the one thing that matters more than anything, that praise that they made it to the promised land. That God was with them. That they did have strength and courage. And maybe for the first time, 
they realize with God all things really are possible. That God really can get us through whatever it is that we're facing right now. And that we never really were in it by ourselves to begin with. Amen. And with all those who faithfully come before us, let us stand and profess our faith with saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. that have come to us, uh, to me, or through the prayer chain, include prayers for Vicki Richards, who is in the hospital in California, prayers for Stanley, Hillary Cummings' brother, who has dementia and is getting worse, and for his wife, Judy, prayers for Jan McConaughey and her sister-in-law, Marlene, and their whole family after the death of Jan's brother, Tom, prayers for Deborah, a friend of McSwain's sister, to the death of her husband, Eugene, and prayers of thanks for Elizabeth Graham's successful steroid injection, which has stopped her pain in her hip. 
and also prayers from Jan and Ed Spence for Ed's sister Marlene, who's in a serious diabetic crisis, and prayers for their family. Today, in our prayer time, we are going to give our own shouts, shouts of gratitude and for help. So I will open us, and then I'll invite you all to share uh, gratitudes or thanksgivings to God, and then also uh, prayers of, of help. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks today that we can gather here in this place that you are always with us, that you've always been there through all of it. Thank you for showing up in unexpected ways, for loving us, for guiding us, and strengthening us through trials. And we share all of our gratitudes, named aloud or said in silence, or typed on our screens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the people suffering in wars. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gratitude for our kids who sang today in church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 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 Lord, we lift up to you Vicki and Stanley and Marlene. We ask for your healing mercies and your guidance for doctors and nurses caring for them. We ask that you're with their families and their caregivers. That you give them strength and endurance for this journey. We ask that you're with those that are grieving, especially those who are grieving Tom and Eugene. And we ask that you are with all of us all the shouts of help that we call out in difficult season and through health crisis and when we need help with our kids and help with our caregivers, help those who are grieving, help first responders and our government officials and our teachers and our administrators and our janitors. Help us when we feel lonely and afraid and lost. Help us when we are angry and worried. Help us when things change just too fast. Help us when you don't know what to do or how to do it. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us to also remember that in the midst of all those moments of hard, that there's also moments of gratitude. That the gratitude comes first, before the conquering ever started. Thank you for being with us through trials. Thank you for friends, for hugs, for puppy dog wags for good coffee, for blue skies, for the ways that we can keep in touch with each other. Thank you for photos and videos and celebrations. Thank you today, O oh Lord, as we march forward. <coughs> Thank you for healing mercy, especially for Elizabeth. Help us as we march to places we've never been. We march knowing that you go with us. We march trusting that you will guide us. We march in faith. We march ready to serve you. And when we don't know where to go, 
show us your way. Help us to shout out our praises, knowing that you are the, knowing you as our God, as father and mother, a friend, as confidant, as guide, as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
We all have walls in our lives. We all have something that needs to be torn down. Just remember that God goes before us. God goes with us. And he uses our voices and our words and our actions to teach us and remind us that through it all, God has already torn down whatever walls you're facing. So let your heart shine. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with us. May the love of God the Father surround you. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.